Well, spring is officially here, and if your yard is unsightly and you're not thinking about just how bad it looks, guess what? I bet your neighbors are. And if financial worries have kept you from plowing into your landscape problem, there is no one more suited to offer a solution than Jason Cameron. He is a licensed contractor and host of DIY Network's Desperate Landscapes. Welcome, Jason. We're desperate for your advice. <laughs> well, that's what I'm here for. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. This is certainly the time of year, and of course, here in New Mexico, we're waiting to see the green again and uh, make those lawns come back to life. Uh, so are we. I mean, I think everybody's waiting. This is one of those long winters. We can't wait for it to end. And I think we're all anxious to get back to the uh, landscaping. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you can tell us how do we create a plan and a budget and still be able to work within it? Well, uh, you know, without a plan and a budget, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Even, whether you're a professional or just an average guy looking to uh, spruce up his own landscape, mm. you have to have a plan and a budget. That's the secret to anybody's success. So it doesn't have to be a computer-generated one like we have. You don't need to be an artist. Piece of paper and a pencil, keep it simple. Draw some squares, some circles, your house and your landscape. Some quick dimensions and then sit down and think about, okay, what do I need to make this landscape unique and make it stand out? It okay. might be as simple as looking at the scale of your house, bigger mm -hmm. trees next to it, and then smaller as you as you move away. Okay, well, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea because I think a lot of people think the big picture and, and they get intimidated by that. So if they can just have a couple easy tips that are realistic and practical, that's going to help us achieve that landscape transformation within the budget, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, realist, realistic and practical are keys. So I think uh, a couple really good tips is what we like to do, what I've used many times on Desperate Landscapes, is uh -huh. to dig a trench. Okay. Instead of individual holes, dig a trench. You plant that trench with uh, evergreens. And once you're done, you plant it, you spread them apart, you've got a nice natural fence instead of having a uh, one that you had to buy that might be expensive and have somebody install. This way you do it yourself and you've got a nice natural fence. Uh, another one so, might be the porch. Oh, you know, right, you've, seen, right, so you, you see, you, you've seen these porches that uh, you know, are in disarray, They're, the paint's peeling. So so that's a great DIY project. Get out there, you scrape it, you buy the paint. Now the paint you should get, uh, be, be careful what you buy because it should be a porch paint. Mm. You put that on, it's slip resistant and uh, it's going to look great and give you a whole new look with, with very little money. And uh, so those are just a couple simple ones that you can do to save you money, but also, you know, get out there and do it yourself. And what's nice, I think that, you know, of course, we also always look at appreciating value of our homes. And eventually, if the time does come where we want to sell, I think when you look at the outside of your home and you have that kind of landscaping, you have the right porch, you have the right shrubs, that in itself is going to increase the value of your land, isn't it? Oh, that's huge. It's absolutely huge. I'm glad you brought that up because one of the uh, things that I find throughout the country is people spend a lot of time and money on the inside of their house mm -hmm. and don't worry and leave the outside till later. But sure. The problem is if you're looking to sell or buy, you can't get past that landscape. You're never going to make it to the house. So it's yes. crucial that you spend the time and the money on your landscape and improve it. That's a really good point. And what about if we want to replace the crumbling sidewalk with stepping stones and make it a little bit more appealing? Yeah, that's another one. Uh, again, one of those things that you see it all the time. It's a trip hazard. You don't want anybody suing you because they're tripping on your sidewalk. <laughs> right. Bring some friends in, some family, give them some sledgehammers, go to town, get rid of it. And then uh, we've done a job where we took some 24 inch by 24 inch uh, limestone slabs and created our own walkway using leveling sand. Ooh. And at the end, it actually looked really incredible. So that's an easy way that people can do it themselves, just buying the material and then doing it themselves. Trees are another one. Mm. Again, uh, it's one of those things where if you're working on your landscape, a lot some money for a little bit more money for the big trees, the mature trees, because you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. You get the presence of a big tree, but it shields your house in the summertime, it lowers your cooling costs, and it also shields it in the wintertime from the, uh, from the, you know, and lowers your uh, utility bill. So it's a yes. great, uh, you know, double whammy. Absolutely. So you're saving money and you're also increasing the value of your home and you're also looking good at the same time, which is nice. It's it's all about looking good. Always. Now, you were talking about patios, and patios are important. So if you really want to build your own custom patio, do you have just a couple really simple, quick tips for people? Yeah, patios uh, can be really grand or they can be small. Uh, we've okay. done all different shapes and sizes. So the key is, if you're going to do your own patio, we did one that was a circular patio okay. that uh, we actually ordered from the uh, stone place, and they pre-cut it for us. So actually, you come out, you can actually install it yourself because it's pre-cut. You don't have to get a concrete saw. You don't have to do it yourself. You, ac you actually install it in really, really short time. So oh, that's a good way to do You're going to spend a little bit more money up front, but you're not going to have to hire the professionals to come in and do it, so you're going to save that money. Well, that's a great idea. And, of course, uh, some people want a professional like you. How can viewers enter the search for America's most desperate landscape? That This is it. I mean, for, the, for those viewers out there watching right now that have that desperate landscape, yes. this is the fourth annual DIY search for America's most desperate landscape. This is your opportunity to get a video in. You've got till May 2nd. Okay. You can go to DIYnetwork.com to get all the rules and regulations. But I'm going to give you guys a quick tip. Okay. All right? 
when you put that video together, make sure it shows your personality. I want to see who I'm, who I'm, uh, who I'm dealing with, and I want to mm. see how desperate the landscape really is. So don't leave that out. Okay. And uh, this is going to be a one-hour special on uh, the DIY Network uh, in July, so you could be that person Perfect. and that, that wins a $25,000 makeover for their landscape. So uh, don't hesitate to sign up. Fabulous. It's certainly worth entering. And I want to remind everyone the show is Desperate Landscapes. It's on every Wednesday at 8 on the DIY Network. Jason Cameron, thank you so much for the tips. They've been really helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.